this is Rob Packard from Medical Device Academy. This video is going to explain how the registration and listing process works. And I get this request all the time from existing clients that we have that are implementing turnkey quality systems, or we've just helped us uh, obtain 510k clearance for, and now it's time to register. We also get this request from companies that are outside the country uh, that aren't familiar with registering with the FDA that have 510k exempt devices because they also have to register and contract manufacturers that need to register with the FDA. So no matter which group you fall into, this video will be for you to explain the process. We're not the only firm that provides this service. Uh, Registrar Corp is probably one of the most common companies that provide this service. But one of the myths I like to dispel is there is no registration certificate from the FDA. If you hire Registrar Corp, they will give you a PDF certificate. And it looks fancy, but it's created by Registrar Corp and it's not created by the FDA. The only thing you get to prove that you are actually registered with the FDA is your name of your company shows up on the registration database. And that's updated every Monday evening in batches. So if you update your information on Friday, it doesn't show up right away. You have to wait till next week and then it will show up in the system. So every once a week, Monday evening, they update it. And if the FDA changes that schedule, I have no control over it. Um, the only way I learned about it is I asked somebody at the registration database, it's not showing up in the database yet. And they said, yes, every week, Monday evening, I think they even said midnight, they updated it as a batch. So all the uh, documents are updated because I'm sure they get a lot of files updated uh, over weekends and evenings and by companies all over the world. So it's easier to update the public database once a week is a batch. So let me share my screen and I'll walk you through the entire process. So step one, I'm going to take you to our website where you can get more information. And that's actually where I'm going to post this video. I'm going to embed it in our website. So if you go to the search function on our website and you type in registration, um, the second link here is FDA Establishment Registration Listing for Medical Devices. And this is a blog that I wrote in June 26, 2014. So it's been around a long time. I've updated it just recently um, and I'm embedding the video here. So right now this is not a real video, it's just a placeholder, but I'm gonna, after I finish recording this video, that's where it's gonna play and it'll play right out of our embed link from YouTube. So you can also go to our YouTube channel and view these videos and other videos as well. And you can subscribe if you are interested in receiving updates whenever uh, we post new videos on quality systems or regulations. So in this article, I have lots of hyperlinks. There's a hyperlink for a guidance document, the FDA user fee website, um, more guidance documents, ways to pay the fees, more websites, account management page, turnkey quality system that we offer, registration listing assistance, so this is something new that we created. When you click on that, it'll open up a new page, takes you to our contact us page. So here's the menu options, contact us on our page. Um, this uh, has a Calendly link below here and I created this brand new. If you click on this registration listing assistance, it'll pull up a browser here where it allows you to schedule on my calendar a time to get help from us on registration and listing. Now there's a fee of $600. And if you read all the details here um, down below, it's not even showing 100% of it. Down at the very bottom, it's supposed to say that there's a 75% um, a seventy-five percent refund if we're unable to complete your registration. So the whole process takes two minute, two meetings. The first one should take about 15 minutes, but we schedule 30. And the second one should take about 15 minutes, but we schedule 30. But if we're not able to complete your registration, either because you don't have a 510K yet, and you didn't read the instructions, or because we have some other technical difficulty, the payment wasn't received or whatever, we can either continue on the process until we get it done, or we can give you a refund of 75%. But it's very important to read up at the front here. It says before scheduling the meeting, you need to confirm that you already have 510K clearance for your device, that requires 510K clearance or your device is exempt from 510K clearance. Otherwise we can't complete the process. So I'm warning you up front. I'm telling you in the video, but somebody will not get that part for whatever reason, or they will think they have it and they didn't. 
and they can reschedule it another time, or we can wait until they get that information, or we can give you the 75% refund. But if you choose to schedule the meeting, it will allow you to pay via PayPal the, the $600 fee. And so let's say I'm gonna schedule it for tomorrow morning. I go in here, I say, oh, I want 11, 8, 8 a.m. Eastern time, I confirm. And then I type in my information. So I'm gonna put in my information um, and maybe I would put in the 510K number of my address and all that information, but you don't have to. We can discuss that on the phone and uh, when we do a Zoom session and we'll cover that. Uh, oh, here's where that 75% information is right here under payment terms and you pay with PayPal and then click schedule the event and you'll get an automatic email it will tell you all the information that you need. So that's how you can schedule it with us. Like I said, there's another firm, Registrar Corp, that does the same thing. You can go to them and they do this. I don't remember how much they charge, but it's comparable dollars. Um, this is just something that we offer free to companies that we do turnkey quality systems for and 510k submissions for. So if you're not in one of those two groups, we'll also do it for you, but we charge $600. For the other companies that are already working with us, we do that for free. So now I'm gonna show you how to actually do the registration. As I said, there were two steps. So step one, we have to first go to what they call the DFUF website, D-F-U-F. -F. So the hardest part of all this process is gonna be creating passwords and accounts for the FDA. And the hard part about the passwords is um, uppercase, lowercase, numbers, symbols, can't repeat previous ones, must be a strong password, you get the deal. So. The first thing I'm gonna look for is DFUF. So I'm gonna type in DFUF website into a Google browser. And the first link is what I want here. I click on that. And this hyperlink at the top in the first paragraph in the first sentence says device facility user fee website. The acronym is DFUF, you know, FDA likes their acronyms. So we click on that. It takes me here. It has a um, security um, fraud warning and ask me to confirm that I agree with these things. I say, I click, I understand. And now it allows me to create a new account and you can click on this link here and create an account. I have a demo account that I use for these trainings. It's dfuf123 and I have a password in there. And so I click login. And now I can go in here and demonstrate how you pay your user fee. If you created a new account, that's the hard part. And it's literally just put in your name, put in your address, put in your phone number, um, put what country you're from, and then indicate what your password is going to be. And that's the hard part. <laughs> this is the easy part. So that's the part I'm going to demonstrate here. Uh, so there are two types of user fees. One is for a 510k submission for your user fee to get the FDA to review your 510k. And the other one is for a registration uh, fee. If you accidentally pay the wrong fee, you can ask for a refund or you can transfer. Transferring takes a long time. So if you got the money in your bank to pay it twice, ask for the refund. If you don't have the money in your bank to pay it twice, then ask for the ref or ask for the transfer, but count on it taking you a while. When I say a while, probably 30 days to get all the paperwork messed up. So pay attention to which one you're doing. And I say this because I've made this mistake <laughs> and I've had to do the transfer and I've had to ask for the refund and I've had to explain this in different languages to clients all over the world. So you won't be the first person that's made this mistake. It's not an intuitive website. It's not something that pops up with a big warning letter. Are you sure you didn't mean to do the other type of user fee? <laughs> so everybody makes this mistake. Don't make this mistake. Decide which one you're doing. So we're discussing FDA registration listing. So if you were doing a 510K instead, you go down here to the medical device user fee and click on go. And then you're gonna answer these questions and yes, application details, and it's for CDRH, it's for 510K. Click continue. Are we a small business? Yes, you probably are, but if you don't have this number down here, you can't use that option. So that's a whole nother topic on small business, but it's covered on that webpage I showed you. So, oh, I clicked the wrong one. I meant to demo with no. So continue. Um, no, neither one of these apply to us, but if it, let's say you had a pediatric only product, then you could click that box and then it would be free. And then proceed. 
and now it allows to actually pay. Now everybody clicks on this and that's to delete. You don't wanna delete. What you want to do is click on next and now it will allow you to pay, okay? So they're just making sure that everything's correct. So I click on next, everything's correct. Submit the cover sheet. Wants me to submit it again, I don't know why. And now finally it's letting me pay now. So you have to be careful, read the screens. It is not intuitive. You can easily click the wrong thing and I have, and it takes a while because it's an FDA website. All FDA websites load slow because there's a ton of stuff from decades and decades of postings. So now you have two options, bank ACH or debit credit card. If you are a foreign firm and you don't have a US bank, you're gonna to have to pay by credit card and the process will take a little longer to clear the money, usually four days at least. Could take as long as a week or 10 days. If you are a US bank or um, for instance, you were sending it to your distributor and your distributor is doing all this for you, they might do it out of the US bank and do this and then type in their, their bank information and process everything. Once you've done the processing and you paid this, then you wait for the money to clear. If you do it through a US bank, an ACH transaction, it takes 24 hours, assuming it's a weekday. If it's a weekend, you get away until Monday morning. And then once the whole thing is done, you can see I've demoed this a few times. So all the ones that begin in MD, those are uh, 510K submissions. So this is the one I just did today. So we go in here and the number that we, this is what we paid. And this at the top of the form, this MD number is the number that we're gonna put on the user fee payment cover sheet, uh, or this is the user fee payment cover sheet. This is what we're gonna put on your form 3514 or in your e-star submission, we're gonna put that payment identification, identification number. And we need a copy of this PDF. This is form 3601. So we need this form to prove that you've paid. So you need to download this. If you're wondering how to download, you log in, you go up here to previous cover sheet. That's the icon in the middle with a little truck and it'll pull up this page. And then you want this particular, the most recent one probably is the one that you've paid. And it shouldn't say pay now over here. If it says pay now, you haven't paid it yet. But if it doesn't say that anymore, um, so these have probably already been paid like this one's probably for small business or something or pediatric. So I gave an example and I would type in that number, but this is how you get that form. So now the whole process is done. We, we took maybe, a, maybe five, 10 minutes to do this whole process. The hard parts setting up the account in the password. Once you've done that, you wait for the money to clear and then you need to download this PDF form once the money's cleared and you have to have that code. And now you're all set for um, creating the process for uh, creating the actual registration listing. Another thing I wanted to show you in here. Uh, so when you're doing a registration and listing, um, it's a little different. When you're doing a 510K, you're going to have, um, you're gonna have a different dollar amount here and it's gonna say it's for a 510K submission. But when you do a registration listing, you're going to have this dollar amount, which is the annual user fee payment, and you're going to have a PIN PCN number. Because this PIN PCN number is not here, that tells me the money didn't clear. We need that PIN and PCN number. Once you, when you initiate the payment, you're going to get a PIN number. That's the payment identification number. The PCN is the payment confirmation number. That shows you the money is cleared. If you don't get that, but your bank shows the money's removed from your account, you need to get some clarification from the bank and send that off to the FDA's accounting department and they'll fix it for you. And it won't be quick, but that's your only option. This is the payment identification number, the PIN number, they have it at the top of the form. It will show up here down here with the PCN as well when it's cleared, but before it's cleared, you just get the PIN at the top, okay? And I'm going to go back one more time. So I'll go back to the beginning. Here's the user fees. If we were paying the establishment user fee, you go here. Now, right now, this says 2021. That's because it's fiscal year 2021. 
after we get closer to the new fiscal year, fiscal years for the FDA begin October 1st, when we get into like September, people will be paying for the 2022 calendar year. So you need to be careful you're not paying for the wrong year. The fees will be different. So keep an eye out. Right now it says 2021 everywhere, but it will very soon have 2022 as well here and you can easily pay the wrong one. Once again, transfer or refund, your choice. But if you're paying an FDA registration fee, you're gonna go here and then continue and then add to cart, next, next, submit, submit. Gives me this big long disclaimer thing telling me how to pay the money. So if you're sending a check or sending a letter of credit or sending you something, some other method that's unusual, this is how you would do it. But most people are sending, putting in credit card information or they are, um, or they're doing an ACH and they go down here to pay now. This is the payment identification number, the pin number we need, but we don't have confirmation yet. It hasn't cleared because you haven't paid yet. So it's thinking, thinking, thinking. And see, now we're back to that same page that we saw before for the FDA 510k user fee, where it gives you the option of ACH or debit and credit card. And once you pay that, let's say I'm going to do the ACH, continue, it lets me put in that information. So I'm going to cancel this right now. And so if you want to pull up your old one, you go here to the previous orders and PCNs, it'll give you this table, and we're going to go to the most recent one. And now we have the pin number up here, but we don't have a PCN. So the money hasn't cleared yet. So you may have to go back a few days later after you've paid and there should be one here that has the PCN as well. And it won't say pay now over on the right hand column. So that's how you do the payment process. That's the first half. The whole thing should take you 15 minutes. I have had to take longer where people ask questions and have troubles and looking up bank information, whatever it is. But it's really just name, address, phone number, and your bank information, and then picking the right option of which fee you're gonna pay. And then you get to log back in to download the, the form once the money's cleared. So now that we've done all that whole process, now we're gonna go back to our browser. So here's our Google browser. And now we're gonna pretend we're in our second meeting that I'm gonna schedule with you. We schedule a 30 minute meeting and it only takes 15 minutes. But this time we're going into the Furls website. So we go into Furls website and you want the second link right here, just like before, second link. And we once again have an account already set up here. So the hardest part is creating the account. And so don't pay attention to this. If you don't have an account, go down here where it says new user and create your account and follow all the instructions. And once again, the password's the hardest part. <laughs> But if you have your account already set up, like I do, we click on I understand. And if you haven't logged in here, if you only do this once a year, guaranteed you're gonna have to update your password. But I've already updated it. So I click log in and now I'm in. This is for registration of all kinds of facilities, not just medical device facilities. So we're not food producers. We're not doing export tracking. We're not doing any of these things. All we want here is medical device registration and listing module. So I click there. Now I am in. If I were create, if I were you and I were creating a new registration enlisting for my medical device manufacturing facility, uh, or it's an initial importer and we're doing that, or it's a contract manufacturer, whatever facility we're creating an account for, you would go over here to register a new medical device facility. Okay. If we're renewing, then you'd fill in these things, but no existing one is probably what we would do and we would follow the prompts and go through this process. And I'm not gonna go through it all right now. This, this is what we do. It doesn't take very long. It's, it's contact information that we're trying to get in here to create this account, but that's where we do this and you follow the prompts. However, the other reason why I go into this site is if I'm acting as a US agent. So some of our clients might be US agents, like a distributor acting for uh, a company that's outside the US that needs a US agent. So if you're in that category, 
you're going to get this notice say, can you confirm that you're the US agent? So when you do that, you click on this link instead at the bottom and it has a code in your email. You type in that code and click next and you're done. That's all there is to it. So if you're confirming that you're the US agent, you'll get an automated email. You'll go in, create your account. You'll go down to the bottom of the page, say you're confirming you're a US agent, type in your code and click next. You have a limited number of days to do that. It's usually five or 10 days. If you miss that window, they have to restart the whole entire process for assigning a US agent and send you a new confirmation. It happens pretty quickly, but try to catch the email the first time through. Um, but when we walk companies through this, we go through the register a new facility login and there's no existing one. And we go to register my facility. Um, are we buying another facility? No, not in this case, that's not typical, but that could be a case. And so in this case, I already have my company's information in here. And um, we could say same as owner operator, same as official correspondent, but you answer all these questions. If you are a foreign firm, you're going to need a DUNS number. I have a DUNS number, but if you're a foreign firm, a lot of foreign firms don't have a DUNS number. You're gonna need that in order to complete this process. US firms don't have to have that, but it's a good idea anyway for um, getting your credit rating for your business. But I, I'm not gonna go through all this now in the training because some of this requires I actually enter information to go to the next page. And then I'd be entering all my confidential information for my company or one of my clients. So this is essentially the process. It literally only takes 15 minutes for the two steps, 15 minutes for the first one, 15 minutes for the second one. We book a half an hour for each session and I'll be happy to answer questions. And we can record this in YouTube so you can watch it next year when you have to repeat and renew your registration. And I hope this was helpful to you, but this is the process. And everybody has struggles with this because they only do it once a year. The only reason why our firm's really good at this is because we have almost 100 active clients and they're all at various stages and they all have to are doing their first registration at some point during the year. So we end up doing at least one of these a week. Um, so it's really easy for us, but if you have trouble, just give us a ring, schedule an appointment with us and we'll help you out. Thank you and hope this was helpful. Bye-bye.